The Jetsons predicted that by 2062, humans would have flat screen TVs, robo vacuums, flying cars, and smartwatches. Well, welcome to the future, baby, half a century early. Now the Jetsons smartwatch could only do video chat, so we're actually doing better than predicted. But these wrist computers don't fulfill the futuristic promises that we might have hoped for. Now, my own personal take here, I bought an Apple Watch Series 7 back in March because I have a heart condition. And for a long time, I felt like a smartwatch with a heart rate monitor would be a solid purchase for somebody in my unique position. Well, you might notice that I am not currently wearing one, and that's because I sold it after two months of owning it. The reasons for me personally getting off of the smartwatch bandwagon will be discussed later, but let's just set the scene for why you should also be getting off the bandwagon. Believe it or not, smartwatches have been around since the 1970s, and those ones were hilarious. We're just gonna skip forward to about 2015, which is when Apple dropped the Apple Watch, marking the beginning of the smartwatch era as we know it today. This fancy gizmo was perfectly suited to the ideal Apple customer. It was slick, expensive, and not really necessary. Now, when these things launched, it was a big deal. It felt like the iPhone launch, a new category, a new frontier for the tech world that would change the way that we communicate as a species. But it was predictably a letdown. That baby will do everything but tell you what time it is. It doesn't tell time? No. Basically, the biggest perk of this thing was that you could get notifications without needing to pull the phone out of your pocket, which, yes, I know, is a is a very stressful and strenuous part of your everyday. Don't put it in your pocket. Where do you want me to put it? Anywhere not in your pocket. The Apple Watch quickly became the best-selling watch on the market, outpacing tycoons like Rolex and Tag Heuer. Despite its ultimately questionable reviews and functionality, smartwatches are now one of the most popular wearable products worldwide and are expected to generate $45 billion USD this year. Now, modern smartwatch technology has come far enough that there can be an argument made for the functionality of these devices. You no longer need to plug them in to use the screen, and they're a lot sleeker than the wrist keyboards of the past. Compared to the iPhone, the Apple Watch does have some improved features. Supposedly, this is better for activity and fitness tracking, which I can kind of confirm, and it goes more places, like underwater sometimes. It has some useful features for health-related situations, like people who are diabetics or people who have heart conditions. And finally, it can call 911 for you in an emergency, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't know if there's anyone who truly just has an Apple Watch on their wrist, but a lot of people are really into the idea of having access to basic communications like texting or calling or GPS without the distraction of the doom scroll that can happen when you're looking at your phone. But that's not really how these watches are being used today. For the most part, watches still need to be near their companion iPhone to work. The Apple Watch Ultra is the most suited to all day use without needing an iPhone. There are lots of videos of people trying this out for like an entire day with relatively mixed reviews. For some, it works pretty well. For others, there were just a lot of issues with connectivity, GPS, battery life, and ultimately still needed a bigger device to get things done on. And this is the first real problem of the smartwatch. In a world of iPads, iPhones, and MacBooks, the smartwatch is fairly limited in its uses, but a lot of people are still buying them. So why? One quarter of smartwatch users say that their main reason for buying a smartwatch was for the health and fitness benefits. Basically me. Now, I loved closing my rings every day, you know, monitoring all my fitness for about three weeks. Um, and then I pretty quickly lost my enthusiasm for the whole gamification thing and just stopped using it. And the thing is, that's just my opinion, but it's a lot of other people's experiences too, because the research agrees. Apparently, only about half of smartwatch users actually use the health tracking technology available on the device. One third of people using the fitness trackers stop within six months, and over half of the users abandon them altogether. People who use Fitbits and other fitness trackers are actually less successful in meeting their health goals or maintaining motivation after the tracker is gone. And finally, the metrics aren't even that reliable. 
And see, this is the theme with the smartwatch promises in general. There's so many amazing things that it can technically do, but none of them do them well enough to be a game changer. I bought my Series 7 specifically because of its ECG feature, which is really accurate and a pretty phenomenal technology that Apple has developed. Basically use the pulse in your finger and in your wrist to measure your heart rate at a particular moment. While this feature has been proven to be effective at measuring and capturing irregular heart rhythms in other patients, it never worked for me. Basically, you need to find a place really stable where you can put your arm on the table really still and hold it for 30 seconds. Now, in that 30 seconds, I was never able to get a conclusive reading because, you know, I was like running or something or jumping around and, and by the time I like found a place to chill out, put my arm and hold it for 30 seconds, it just, either the moment had passed or, or the reading just didn't come through clearly enough. But here's the thing, for the millions of people with heart conditions across the US, and myself included, it was a health-related reason to justify buying an expensive watch. We're talking four digits sometimes here. But Apple is the king of manufacturing problems and then selling us the solutions. Do you remember when they removed that headphone jack at the same time that they released AirPods for the first time? Smartwatches are no different here. No one needs a smartwatch. No one cared before. Caring about it is a need I invented to sell this kind of stuff. But it seems like everyone and their dog has one nowadays. Apple sneakily invented a whole new product class that they could have people replacing every year or two with planned obsolescence. It's truly a great business model. Terrible for the environment and everyone else, but a great business model for them. Now to give you my very biased perspective on this, basically the best case scenario for you buying a smartwatch is you waste a bunch of money on a device that you barely use. But what's the worst case scenario you might ask? Well, it's a lot more insidious. Because the thing is, these are literally trackers. They are no doubt gathering information about you and your life, where you go, when you sleep, how much you exercise, and more. Make no mistake, this data collection is not neutral. And there are fears that other health apps like menstrual cycle tracking could be used to criminalize people for getting abortions since Roe v. Wade was overturned. Nobody knows the extent to which these companies are harvesting our personal data or what they're doing with it, never mind the risk of hacking, etc. Because this technology is changing so fast, it's basically impossible to know all of the ways that it's impacting us. We're gonna learn down the road that, you know, people who have these fitness trackers monitoring their everyday lives have watery poops. Like that could just be it. Like maybe we don't know this now, but like all these people having watery poops are having them because they got this wristwatch monitoring their, their blood flow or something. That's probably not a great example. We'll workshop that one. <laughs> Regardless of the impacts, the tech is definitely reshaping our brains, literally changing our neural pathways. And while we don't know what the outcome is going to be, the effects that we're seeing are already pretty black mirror-y. Here's my main concern with all this. If we're outsourcing our self-awareness and motivation to these smartwatches, we're basically setting ourselves up to be controlled by them. Take for an example, phantom notifications. Yeah, I can't be the only one that sometimes feels like my phone just buzzed in my pocket when it didn't. Well, the same thing is happening on people's wrists which on its own makes sense and doesn't seem too scary, until you think about it in a Pavlovian way where we are basically being conditioned to respond to a small vibration telling us something. Dwight, one open. Okay. Altoid? Sure. What are you doing? My mouth tastes so bad all of a sudden. In our smart homes video, we talked about the amount of control that you give up when you adopt a smart home system. And that video is also very depressing if you wanna go watch it after this one. Inoperable locks, 
hacked security systems, lights that won't turn on. Imagine that same thing when you outsource your self-awareness and motivation to a little thing on your wrist. Eventually, you're going to start relying on this to be motivated to do anything. Because it's already happening. Some smartwatch users have said that they have started to rely on the watch to tell them things like whether or not they slept well or were they energized enough for a workout instead of just like, you know, checking in for a second and seeing how you feel. Others have said that if they forget their watch at home, there's no point in going to the gym that day. I've literally done that myself. I have turned around on a walk, gone home just to get the watch so that I could record those steps and not miss out. Some psychologists have noted how smartwatches, with their ability to track things like sleep, heart rate, and time spent on various activities, can help us understand our inner motivations and needs, which does seem valid. We are outsourcing our self-awareness to this device and relying on it to tell us what we like and what we don't like. At the same time, technology use is known to wear down the pleasure center in your brain, making it harder and harder for you to feel pleasure in the first place. It's like the energizing feeling that you get from going on a run or jumping into the ocean versus the energizing feel that you get when you chug an entire cup of coffee. That's it, WrestleMania shares a field with the test. Oh no! Stunner! Stunner! It doesn't feel that far off to imagine a future where Siri can notice when you're feeling sad and make a suggestion to cheer you up. And maybe sure that suggestion is to listen to your favorite song or go on a run, or maybe it's something else, like buying something from a corporation that runs your algorithm. And yes, this is really sad and dark and, and creepy, but we're not even at the creepiest part yet. Martin Cooper, the father of the cell phone and former head of Motorola, believes that cell phones are literally going to become a part of our bodies. Way back when, his original vision was a cell phone that would be an extension of a person and would be with that person at all times. And let's just do a quick fact check here. Yes, point for Martin, because I'm addicted to my phone. But recently he gave another prediction. He said, I kid you not, the cell phone is going to become a part of you. Parts of the cell phone will be embedded under your skin. Yummy. But he doesn't even stop there. You won't have to charge a cell phone because your body is the perfect charger. I mean, come on, are we in the horror movie right now? See, humans are teetering on the parallel universe line between having the world ruined and relying on tech as our savior or having ruined the whole world and seeing tech as a part of that problem. One of the weirdest parts though is that smart tech brands itself as both of these things at once, it's more tech that will give you a life of less tech. Like there is a lot of people who buy a smartwatch because they don't want to look at their phones as much. And I can't be the only person that thinks that that is kind of a crazy justification, right? For some of us, sure, absolutely. The smartwatch can be a very functional tool, but for the vast majority, it's either unnecessary, not actually good enough at doing its job, or a creepy tracking monitor thing that's transmitting your daily movements to a massive corporation. Like most Apple products, it's something we buy because we want to be more productive, want to be healthier or cooler, whatever. But just because tech has got us into all of these messes, it doesn't mean that tech is the thing that's going to get us out of them. As we get closer to this smarter tech world, we are seeing a rise in the opposite of dumb tech. Take the light phone. Their whole thing is that they designed this product so that you use it less. It doesn't have social media, a web browser or apps. It only phones and texts. And yes, there is a headphone jack. Mighty is a modern MP3 player that can actually sync with your Spotify and Apple Music so that you can listen to stuff without an internet connection or the threat of any sort of curated playlist that Spotify has decided to throw at you that day. And FreeWrite is a digital keyboard that lets you type into a word processor but without internet access. Like if a typewriter and a laptop had a baby. This way you have the benefits of word processing technology but without the distractions of the internet. Will this be enough to offset the radically increasing technological bend that we seem to be on? 
Maybe not. But it's good to know that at least some of us want other options and you might be able to get them if you're looking for that. If you're interested in other tech-free or tech light solutions to these kinds of situations or weird products in the world that we should talk about, we have a Reddit page where we talk about other things that don't make it on this channel. So go and check us out over there and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos every single week. Smart watches.